Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Monica Corrado here, the Gap Chef. Um, here to talk with you about anything you would like to talk about in terms of gaps and gaps cooking. And I have a special subject today because it came up on the page and I thought I would address it. So first I'm going to move me back a little bit. There we go. All right. So again, Monica Corrado here. Um, sorry for the late notice, but I will be here every Tuesday unless I let you know otherwise. Um, Again, my website is simplybeingwell.com. If you're new to the group, welcome, 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 welcome to the group. Welcome to the page. Welcome to GAPS if you're new to GAPS. Um, yeah, love to have you here. A uh, couple of rules uh, or guidelines that make things easier. One is to please check the page. If you have a question, use the search button or the search little magnifying glass to search for a subject to see if we've talked about it already. Another is to please check the featured posts because the featured posts uh, have some gifts for you. Not only my intro diet chart, which you can have and download and put on your refrigerator and all that good stuff, but also some um, information about beet kvass and cabbage tonic and recipes and um, meat stock and what makes meat, meat, meat stock not gel. Um, lots of things there, coupons for my book, et cetera, et cetera. Please do not go to Amazon to try and get my book because at this point they say it's 450 or 600 or 700 bucks, which is ridiculous. Go to my website, simplybeingwell.com, and let's get you a book. All right. Um, you can also go straight to my publisher, Celine River Press, S-E-L-E-N-E, -E River, R-I-V-E-R, press.com. You can find it there. All right, so here we are today. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Just quickly, I am not a medical doctor. Um, I cannot claim to talk about healing at all. Um, nothing I say has been uh, certified or approved by the FDA. But I still have a lot to say, and hopefully it will help. So today I thought that we would start with casseroles. I want to start with casseroles, and I'm starting with casseroles because, because they're so easy, and they're so yummy, and they make their own meat stock for you, right? And they are a fundamental question, or a fundamental um, uh, cooking technique on the intro diet. In fact, um, casseroles come in in stage two. So we had a question on our page this weekend or the last couple of days um, about, talk to me about casseroles. And um, I love this topic because it's not what you think. So first I want to say hello to everyone and then we'll get started. So hello to Josephine. Welcome. Carol, great to have you from across the pond. Hello, Karen and Katya. Hello, David. Excellente. Good to have you all and whoever's not saying hi, but good to have you. Um, I will take questions after I fix this flip. Ha <laughs> ha. No. After I go through uh, what casseroles are in gaps. All right. So let's talk about casseroles. One more time with feeling. Stage one is meat stock and and uh, blended soups made from meat stock. Meat, meat stock. Um, stage two is meat stock, everything in stage one, and casseroles and stews. So, if you live in the U.S., which some of you do, you have an idea about a casserole. It's something that was really big in the 60s, and, um... It's not what a GAPS casserole is. Christina, I hope you're here to learn about casseroles. All right, so GAPS casseroles are so fabulous. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Go and climb to the rooftops and shout it 
go to the top of the mountain. Let people know there's another way to make meat stock. It's so easy. Okay, so. Hmm, I just, hmm, should I go to a gap? I'm going to tell you what a gaps casserole is. So throw out all the ideas of casseroles you have if you live in the U.S. In the U.S. and maybe all over the world, I don't know. But in the U.S., the idea of a casserole is you take some, you take a big pan. I call it a lasagna pan because I'm Italian. Could be a Pyrex pan. It's a big dish, long, usually 11 by 14 ish, and it's it's pretty uh, deep. And we put meat in there, and then we put usually uh, cooked vegetables in there. And then we cover it with potatoes or cheese and we bake it in the oven. That is a U.S. casserole. That's a casserole everybody thinks of. You're all thinking of the green bean casserole, which is horrible. Sorry, that's my opinion. Um, right? The canned green bean casserole we used to make in the 60s for Thanksgiving. Ah! Um, with Campbell's mushroom soup plus green beans, a can of green beans, plus jerky onions, and we baked it in the oven. That is not real food, people. All right, so take that idea and throw it out. That is not a Gaps casserole, okay? Just forget it. Now, a Gaps casserole is this. You take a Dutch oven. You left out the cream of whatever soups. I did say cream of mushroom soup, Lee. I did. I did say that. Yucca. All right. Um, hello, Brea Lynn. Okay. So, um, all right. So here's what we do. Ready? Gaps casserole. Just, you can close your eyes. Imagine yourself in your kitchen. Imagine yourself near your stove. Imagine yourself happy. Imagine yourself with a Dutch oven. You get a Dutch oven out, six quart, eight quart, right? You take a piece of meat with a joint in it of some sort, okay? Also, in the UK, they call a joint a roast with a bone in it. So, you take a roast with a bone in it, any kind of roast. Actually, I've got all sorts of roasts I could tell you about, but there are beef roast, lamb roast, pork roast, right? A roast with a bone in it. That's what we're looking for. Usually about three pounds, maybe four pounds. You can go bigger, but if you go smaller, it's not really gonna be a great meal. So three, four, five pound roast with a bone in it. You put it inside of a Dutch oven. You add in whatever fabulous vegetables you love, like carrots that are GAPS compliant. Carrots, onions, turnips, um, what else? Rutabaga, um, zucchini, squash, butternut squash, acorn squash, um, hmm, kabocha squash, right? Whatever. You put all your vegetables in, cut in a way that you love, meaning bite size. And then you fill up the pot about half, halfway up the roast, Halfway up the roast. Okay, folks? A little bit of salt, a little bit of herbs. Put on the lid into the oven. Into the oven at mm, 275 to 300, around five to six hours. All right, or until the meat. I'm sorry that's Fahrenheit, folks, but it's 275 to 300 Fahrenheit. I like to go low. Um, I just did one yesterday with fabulous, I almost brought you all on live last night, beautiful shanks, beef shanks, gorgeous grass-fed shanks. What was it? Shanks, turnips, carrots, onions, rosemary from the garden, garlic, salt, water, Ba in the oven. In any case, so one more time with feeling, gaps, casseroles are another way to make meat stock. All right? Again, you take a casserole dish that has a lid. Some people own those, so that's fine. Or a Dutch oven, because a Dutch oven has a lid and co can go into the oven. 
okay? Get a joint of meat, meaning a roast with a bone in it, okay? Again, it could be beef, lamb, pork, bison, goat, whatever. Could also be a chicken. It could be a turkey. It could be anything you want. Put it into the casserole. You could cut it up if you want to. I'm thinking turkey, big, mm, maybe needs to be cut up. All right. Into the casserole pot or Dutch oven. Put in the veggies you love. Fill it up halfway with water, halfway up the roast with water. Herbs, salt, peppercorns, lid into a, into a 275 oven, five to six hours. That is a casserole, GAPS style, folks. So don't get confused. This is not an American casserole, which is made from pre-cooked food and covered with cheese or potatoes and baked, or sometimes cheese and potatoes are baked. All right, so that is a GAPS casserole and it is yummy. And if you wanna really make it good, which I know you do, two fine points for you. Number one, the first fine point is it's a wonderful thing to ferment that meat. Ferment the meat, ferment the meat. You're like, Monica, what are you talking about? Easy peasy. Grab a quart of your homemade sauerkraut or cortito or kimchi or beets or whatever you've got, okay? You don't have to use the whole quart. Grab your homemade ferment, take a handful of it. All right, I'm always using my hands in the kitchen. Don't worry, I wash them a lot. I'm always using my hands. So I take a handful, which is probably like a cup, half a cup to a cup of a ferment, Put it in, put it in with the meat and the water and the ferment. That's all that goes in there. Put it on your counter with the lid on six to seven to eight hours. Let it just sit there in the kraut, you kraut with water in with the beets and water, which will turn your meat red. So figure out if you want to do that or not, right? Um, cortito, whatever you've got that is a fabulous, oh, I'm having a thought folks, how about I'm gonna do this. How about a pork roast? Have any of you made chutney? A pork roast with peach chutney. Now the peach chutney that's in the Nourishing Traditions cookbook, rockin'. If you are on full gaps, it's got peaches or other stone fruit. Um, I know it's November, sorry, but maybe you have this in your refrigerator. So peaches, uh, raisins, crispy nuts, um, pepper, cilantro. I mean, oh my God. So if you took that, you took your pork roast, put your water in, you put a handful or a cup full of this beautiful chutney. You let it sit there for six hours at room temperature with the lid on. Then in it goes, the whole thing. Put your veggies in and in it goes, the whole thing into the oven. I'm telling you, I'm gonna do that this weekend. It's gonna rock with deliciousness. I know, that's my own word. All right, so I said two things. Number one was make it fabulous by fermenting, using, using a ferment, leaving it out on the counter for a while, several hours. The other way to make your casserole, Gaps casserole, fantastico delicious, is to stage your vegetables. Now, what does that mean? That means you know that all vegetables uh, vegetables have different cooking times, right? I hope you know that. So a carrot would have a longer cooking time than a piece of zucchini. A carrot would have a longer cooking time even than a piece of winter squash. A carrot certainly has more uh, carrots and turnips and so carrots, turnips, oh, carrots, turnips, and rutabagas, right? Those will all have long cook time. So you can put those in at the beginning of the cooking of the casserole. If you're going to use mushrooms or zucchini or summer squash of some kind, I'm trying to think of what else. I would add those in when you have one hour left to cook or else you're gonna have mush. If you'd like to add in some fabulous greens, 
Again, greens are on a scale, right? So you've got like spinach, which is very wimpy greens. Put them in right before you serve. That's it. Cook the whole casserole. You're serving it and, and you're putting some in each bowl. Done. If you want to use chard, the leaves only, chop it up. Put it in the last 10 minutes. Kale, chop it up. Leaves only, the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes at most. So just think about those things when you're doing this new casserole thing, right, folks? So you're getting this idea of you've got a pot with a lid, a big pot with a lid. That's why I'm saying Dutch oven. They're fabulous, right? They're deep. They've got a lid. They're meant for the oven. <sighs> Other people have casserole dishes with lids. I'm not sure who makes them. Maybe some of those fabulous French... Mm, beautiful. I don't know the names of the brands, but anyway, so put it all together into the Dutch oven and then stage your um, vegetables for later, right? Because you don't want a mushy turnip. You don't want a mushy, um, mushy squash. Blech. Maybe you do because I mean, if you are avoiding fiber and you want to have something mushy, go for it. But otherwise stage your veggies. Okay. So I wanted to bring that up because I know I'm seeing some folks asking about casseroles on the page, on our page, on my page. And I want to let you know that that is a gaps casserole. And by the way, that water, that pure, beautiful filtered or spring water that you used yeah, it turns into meat stock. Ah, right? And the clouds open and the sun comes down. It turns into meat stock. So this is why stage two is easy, folks. You're not just eating soup all the time. You really are not. You can have your meat on the plate and some vegetables on the side, which you cover with ghee or butter or Whatever you love, tallow, duck fat when you serve, good salt. And then you have a mug of meat stock. I made that mug, by the way. It's kind of pretty, right? Anyway, okay, so that's what I've got for casseroles today. I think maybe we'll wait for stews till next week. But casseroles are another way for you to make meat stock and to have, for you to have some variety in your life. You know, gaps is not supposed to be boring, folks. I mean, some people really are so sick, God bless you, that it needs to be very, very, uh, I don't want to say boring, but the same foods over and over until you get better. But really, there's so many things you can do. It's so wonderful. All right, let's see what's going on. I hope that was helpful. You guys, guys and gals could give me some thumbs up if that was helpful to you. I hope it was helpful to you. I just got finished teaching a meat stock class, so I'm a little wound up because I'm so excited and happy to be in the kitchen. Okay, thank you. I got one thumbs up. Excellent. Hi. Okay, so we said hello to everybody. David, I'm going to get you your question in a minute. Good to have you. Okay, Ashley. Hey, good to have Ashley with us. And Caroline. Woohoo! And Niska. Woohoo! And Lee came back. And Caroline's back. Uma, Hamda, Yurkazan, Carola is here. Hello, Carola. Good to see you. All right, Tina, let's just go. Hello, Tina. All right, let's see about questions. About, I'm going to stick to the ones with casseroles first and then come back. David, you're next up, buddy. Okay, maybe not buddy, but you're next up. All right, Niska, let's see who says. All right. Niska says, cover the meat with the water and a handful of kraut for fermenting. Nope, just halfway up the meat. Yep. You don't have to cover the meat with water. You're just going to throw. Again, this is right before you're cooking, right? So let's say you, you put this all up in the morning. You get up at 5 o'clock like me or 4.30. And then you go ahead and go in your kitchen and you're quiet because the rest of the house is asleep. And you put this thing together and it could sit on your counter for, you know, if you get it put together by 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Five hours at noon, you can put it in the oven. Yeah. And then it can cook for four to four to six hours and ready to eat when everybody's hungry. It's a fantastic thing. So no, you don't have to cover it with water. You just put, fill it up to halfway up um, with water 
uh, halfway up the roast. I'm trying to make sure I'm clear about that. All right, here's Lee. How about a cranberry chutney? Yes! Any chutney, chutney, as long as it's fermented, right? So you ferment it. Again, you have to be at a point in gaps when you're able to eat all those foods, right? So my beautiful peach chutney is you got to be able to eat peaches and eat crispy nuts and eat, you know, things like that. So I don't know what's in your cranberry chutney, but certainly you have to be able to eat cranberries and um, whatever, apples, things like that. But they're fermented, so the sugar will be low. And yeah, throw that in there. Throw it in, Lee, and let us know how it goes. Going to be yum, yum, yum. All right, let's see what else have we got here. La, 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 la. Lee has. This has celery in it, which could be left out. Great. Again, as long as you can eat celery, it can be in your chutney. If you can't eat celery yet, then leave it out. You know, again, celery is one of those problematic foods. Celery is very fibrous. Celery should not be on intro. Celery, some people put celery in full gaps after you've graduated. I think it's pretty fibrous stuff myself. All right. Hello, Carol. It seems like, okay, wait, uh, let me get back to Carol in a minute. Josephine says, never tomatoes in it. I see in the blue book that raw tomatoes are introduced first in stage five. Yes, throw some tomatoes in it. As long, remember, so let me not be so flip with tomatoes. Here's the deal. Tomatoes are a nightshade, as you all know. Tomatoes are a nightshade, eggplant, peppers, right? Nightshades. Um, potatoes are nightshades, but they're not on the GAPS diet, so we don't have to worry about them. So that's why we have tomatoes coming in so late, like stage five, because especially for people who have nightshade issues. Now, if you do not have a nightshade issue, this is the word according to Monica, okay? I would go ahead and try it and see if you can bring in some cooked tomato. Stage three is where I would put it. So yeah, I mean, I'm Italian. I'm always throwing tomatoes in things. Tomatoes, basil, oregano, right? I'm also Hungarian, so I'm throwing sour cream into everything too. And, um, and uh, cabbage. All right. Hello, Uma. Good to have you. Good to have you. Hello, Alma. Good to have you. Hello, Phelan. Good to have you. All right, let me go back to Carol. Carol, no, nope, I'm going to go up here to... David, because he's been waiting. David says, hello, David, good to have you. How much fermented cod liver oil would you recommend to start with for someone in their 90s who has exhibited sensitivity to die-off, such as itchiness, in response to cultured dairy? Gotcha. Okay, so fermented cod liver oil can be difficult for people who have histamine responses. I've said that before. So that's where I think you're coming from. So David, I would do a skin test first. I really would. I would put it on the skin, right on the wrist, and see how it goes. And I would do that, just see if, if this 90-year-old gets uh, an angry red spot or doesn't. If they don't, then I would proceed with, again, if you're working with the liquid, start with very low. Start with a quarter of a teaspoon, right? Work your way up to a teaspoon, slowly, 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 slowly. Just make sure, too, that you're having the cod liver oil with ghee or with high vitamin butter oil. That's where I would start. I would really start with a skin test for this, for this person, for sure. Let me know if you have other questions, David. Okie dokie, let's see, let's see what else is coming on down the mountain here. Scrolling, 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 okay. Carol asks, it seems like freeze drying is becoming more and more popular as a way to preserve foods. Is this a good option? Yes. Um, I think so. Let's think about our options. So am I right about that or did I say it too quickly? Let me think. I'm trying to think in my mind whether Natasha has said anything about this recently. Freeze drying, freeze drying, freeze drying. I'm not sure, Carol. I'm going to have to go look it up and see if I can find anything about it. I seem to recall something from the Weston A. Price Foundation. Um, 
from her talk at Wise Traditions last month in October. By the way, all of you, if you want, jump on westonaprice.org. You can currently buy, purchase Dr. Natasha's talks. I think it's like 30 bucks, maybe 18 you can have them forever, as far as I know, of her talks that she gave on GAPS um, in Knoxville last month. And, of course, go grab Tom Cowan's talk. And while you're there, I would grab my cousin's, my cousin-in-law's talk, Bill Schindler, Eat Like a Human. Yeah. So I'm not sure, Carol. There's something about freeze-drying that's making me go not quite sure. So let me figure that out. I'm writing down freeze drying question mark freeze drying question mark Carol all right got it okay la 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 let's look David says how long is the skin test so the skin test just so everyone knows anyone that that's new to us Dr. Natasha clearly goes over the skin test in both the blue book and the yellow book. The skin test is once and it's overnight. Okay? The skin test is once and it's overnight. So you're going to see what happens the next day. That's what you do. Um, you conceptualize die off as different than a histamine reaction. It's not the case. Depends on the person. Depends on the person. Usually itchy nose, runny nose, um, inflammation like red heat, um, sneezing, um, itchy in the in the body. Those are hist those are uh, histamine. Those are uh, signs of histamine. Your body is having a histamine response to whatever is going on. Um, in terms of die off, it can look like that especially when you are adding in foods that are probiotic foods, can look like that. Um, also, uh, what else does die-off look like? Headaches, uh, can be migraine headaches, can be cramping in your stomach, can be diarrhea, can be constipation. I mean, it really is, it really does depend on the, on the person, how your body responds when you either starve out the bad guys or you bring in good, uh, more good or beneficial bacteria. So um, when you're working with um, cod liver oil, uh, David, we're not really looking at it in terms of die off. That would be a histamine response. Hello, Alexandra. Let me know if you have other questions. Uma wants to know, is, is vitamin E allowed in the GAPS diet? Vitamin E, vitamin A. D, E, K. Where do you get them? Anybody? You get them from liver. You get them from egg yolks. So yes, you can have it, but you have it through the organ meats, through the animal foods. That's where you get your vitamin E. So supplementation, not a good idea. Salud. Again, let me start over. I'll say it differently. So Uma, um, GAPS is really all about getting your nutrients from the foods first. So if you are doing that well and you're having organ meats every day, which we know is part of the GAPS diet, organ meats every day. I say that every once in a while. It's kind of like I'm dropping a bomb. People freak out. Organ meats every day. Okay. Um, then you'll have plenty of vitamin E. All right. Hello, Faria is here. Hello. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Let me go up and see what else we've got that I haven't hit yet. All right. Uma's question. I took the gap shake exactly what the blue book said yesterday morning, afternoon. I took kefir with a whole raw egg. Today I wake up body ache and I went to the toilet. Big parasite. Yes. Came out. What do you think? Yeah. Good for you. God bless America and everywhere else. I mean, God bless everyone. Um, yeah, good. Great. Great. Yes. Cleansing for sure. Depends on where the parasite was, right? So we know that the gap shake, I use the words decongest. Gap shake helps to decongest the liver 
What do we think the liver is congested with? See my eyebrows? Parasites, stones, all sorts of things. So your body ached. I know. I wonder, um, just remember everyone, the gap shakes are very, very powerful. And you want to start with just a little bit, right? We start with just a little bit. Yep. Yep, just a little bit. Listen to your body. Gradually working things in. Slow and steady. Yeah. How does one know if it's a parasite? I would go look things up on Google ah, or on DuckDuckGo, wherever you want. You could take a look and see what's showing up in the toilet as a parasite. Pretty frightening. All right. You are so welcome. Blessings. Take it easy on yourself, everyone. Slow and steady is so much better than crash and burn, I think. All right. Carol says, so since learning that some people have reactions to ferments and meat stock and cultured dairy so much that it makes them sick, that's called die-off. It makes me nervous to share these foods with friends and family, have people over for dinner, or make them make food for them and have them sample them. Can you talk me through that? Sure, 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 sure. So, hmm. Yes, these are powerful foods, everyone. These are powerful foods. However, what you want to do, like, so what's a food that you could make for people? You could make that fabulous casserole I just talked about. You could make meat stock as a meal, right? You could take a couple of, you could take three pounds of chicken thighs, put them in a Dutch oven, add water with carrots and onion and rosemary and salt and pepper and garlic and cook it and serve it. And they could have a piece of chicken, some vegetables that you give butter, put butter on, and then have a little, a little mug of stock. That should not give anybody major die off for, to do that just once, especially chicken. Chicken is mild and easy and yummy. Um, beef is yummy. Everything's yummy, but it's a milder stock. Um, with ferments, we want to be a little bit more careful. So you want to just let them know this is a live food. This is full of beneficial bacteria, and you really just want to have a bite. Take a bite. You can have a bite, fork full of sauerkraut. Just walk them through it. Through it. It's really a kind thing to do. For example, one of the things I like to make during the summer is fermented salsa to go with chips or or vegetables or whatever. Um, we can make beet chips, we can make carrot chips, we can make uh, turnip chips. You can have all those chips in gaps, no problem. You can also make some great uh, crackers from um, seeds, etc. So um, fermented salsa. So I wouldn't bring that fermented salsa to like a house party and say, hey, I brought salsa because people will eat a lot of it because they think it's dead, right? We're used to eating dead food. We're used to eating food from the store, remembering that in the store, there's the dead zone. You take the roof off of the store, you look down, and in the middle, everything in the middle is dead. Everything in the middle is dead, enzymatically dead. If it's in a can, it's in a box, it's in a bag, it's dead. So humans are used to eating dead food. They're used to polishing off an entire jar of salsa from the store. No problem. They're used to going to Mexican restaurants and eating a whole bowl of salsa. It's dead. So they're going to be used to eating that way. If you bring a fabulous uh, fermented salsa to a party, they are going to think they're eating dead food and proceed as usual. And then they're going to feel sick. And then they will experience die-off. So really, it's just about making decisions, about knowing that you have really wonderful live food. And just to help people walk through it. Hey, it's really good stuff. You know what? I brought some cultured cream. Have a teaspoon in your soup. But don't sit there eating it like it's from the store, which is dead. Or maybe a quarter as live or a tenth as live, right? 
That's the way I would do it. Yeah, remember that you just have to uh, you just have to let people know that they can sample. A bite usually isn't going to send people off to the toilet or into cramping or into diarrheaville. A bite, that's fine. A forkful of bite should be fine. Okay, you are very, very welcome. Hello, Fritzy is here. Hooray! You're welcome, Uma. All right. Okay. All right, I think I've got all of you down. Yay, I love hearts coming up. Woohoo! <coughs> Pardon me, everyone. La, 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 la. All right, so that's what we've been talking about. What else have we got? Does anybody have any questions? We are at 12.06 Mountain Time. I'm happy to answer other questions if people have them. Um, yeah, if you like. Or we could talk about gap stews if people want me to talk about gap stews. Questions about casseroles, questions about anything. I think you mentioned a new version of your... Yes, my book is coming out new. I have a second edition. Uh, it has a spiral binding. Yes. It has an index. It has extra recipes. Yeah, it's coming. I pray it will be ready by Christmas holiday time. It was supposed to be ready by... August and obviously we're far past August so I will let you know. Hello Wanderlust Heart CB. Hello who else? Yes I will let you know when it's coming. Everyone will know. Karen says is canning an acceptable preservation method? My friend produces a lot of food in her tunnel and you her tunnel and uses this method along with fermentation. So Karen I go a lot into the differences between um, if you have my book, I go into the differences between canning and fermentation. The benefit of canning, folks, is that you can, is that, A, it, it preserves things forever unless, unless you break the can or you break the seal or you have it in too hot an area. But uh, canning preserves food for a very, very long time. Of course, it also kills everything, meaning... It kills the beneficial bacteria because of the heat. And it also um, it kills the bacteria and it destroys the enzymes. So canned food is dead food. Just like every can of any vegetable or tomato or coconut milk or anything else you're buying in the store. If it's in a can, it's dead. It's enzymatically dead. It is uh, does not have any bacteria in it good bacteria, it's dead as this table, right? Dead as a doorknob. However, if you're producing a lot of food, it is a good way to preserve that food, especially since you can take that food, those canned jars, and ferment them later on. Because regardless, they are still, they still provide food for microbes right? It's still carbohydrate. It's still fiber. It's still vegetables in there, right? So you can can if you have a lot of produce and you really want to, um, you know, you want to keep it and you want to keep it long. And then before you use it, ferment it. If you're going to eat it raw, if you're going to cook it, don't bother fermenting. Just use it straight out of the can. I hope that's helpful. All right. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Josephine asks, can you take detox baths for too long? Yes, or too short? Yes, usually it's too long. So Josephine and everyone else, I did a Facebook Live on um, the five detox baths. It is sitting on my YouTube channel, which is Monica Corrado. It's under Ask the Gap Chef video right there, five detox baths. Yes, you can absolutely take them for too long, which is why I always suggest that, again, here we are in gaps, and I'm saying slow and steady, right? Slow, short, gradual, etc. So, yeah, I like to suggest that people have a nice big jar of water right next to the tub, and that uh, you start with a small amount, 
for a short amount of time and then continue. I hope that's helpful. Good, good. All right, Faria asks, could you, please, could you share tips on how to cope with hyperemesis? Gra <whistles> no, I really can't. Gravidarum during pregnancy. I'm, I'm assuming you're throwing up all the time. You know, um, I would jump on, have you looked at gaps.me to see if Dr. Natasha has said anything about it? Um, Sally Fallon said something about it. Thinking, thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. So usually those types of things have to do, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just pulling from what I know, have to do with, um, liver, uh, liver function. So liver function and blood sugar issues. So wanting to keep the blood sugar stable, you can use the blood sugar stabilizer, which is um, honey and butter or honey and coconut oil or a mixture of butter and coconut oil. Um, I would really work on supporting the liver and keeping blood sugar stable. That's the best. Quite frankly, the best, everyone, is to do a detox before you get pregnant, right? Both the husband or the partner and the and the wife or the woman, right? The man and the woman, whoever are getting together to have a baby, need to do detoxification prior to conceiving. That's Dr. Tasha's best thing that she said. But you're already in it. Just do the best you can. Um, I would check with gaps.me and the FAQs and see if Dr. Tasha has anything there specific to that take care of yourself all right what to do if you can't get raw cream and can only find ultra pasteurized organic cream yeah ultra pasteurized cream will it still work for kefir cream you know the pro you know i let's see since we know that kefir kefir Kathir is so powerful that it can overwhelm any pathogen. At least that's what we're seeing even in the medical literature at this time, folks. Um, you know what I would do, Caroline? I would suggest if you can only find ultra high temperature pasteurized, I would actually heat it first. I know you don't have to for kefir, but this is UHT. So I would heat it first to make sure nothing else grew since it was pasteurized and then, and then culture. That's what I would do. If I, if that's the only thing I could do, that's what I would do. All right. Wow. We've got a lot of stuff here. Okay. Is MR scanning a big no, no for our body killing microbes? Yes. As far as I know, that's true. All right, you're welcome, Karen. Okay, let me go. Hamda asks, what do you think of constipation in the first stage? I would think that if you are prone to constipation, folks, anyone, if you're prone to constipation, we start on full gaps because there's no fiber in stage one, and so you can be constipated. However, if you're on stage one, what do you do? Ginger tea, ginger tea, ginger tea. Did I say ginger tea? Ginger tea, lots of ginger tea. Um, stay away from whey, W-H-E-Y, because it will tend to firm the stool. I would drink ginger tea. Again, there's a Facebook Live on YouTube on the three teas and what their roles are. I would be drinking ginger tea to get some movement for sure. All right. Yeah, constipation first stage. Remember, stage one, three to five days. That's it. Move to stage two as soon as you can. Dana asks, woo, Dana. Hi, Dana. Okay. I have a question. My little girl couldn't manage ferments until this summer. We went to Corfu in Greece for a few weeks. The sun seems to have worked wonders for her. Yes. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, she can now eat pretty much any amount of ferments, sauerkraut, pickled gherkins, and salt and water, but I still cannot, but still cannot manage dairy. 
Any ideas as to why and how I can try and help her tolerate dairy? So one more time, Dana and everyone else, what does Dr. Natasha say? She says, uh, start with ghee. Can she manage ghee? I would do the dairy introduction protocol. Um, I would start with ghee. And then I would move to butter. If she does not do well with cow, I would definitely be looking at goat, goat first. It may be the answer. For everyone who cannot handle dairy, quote unquote, I can't tolerate dairy, I can't tolerate cultured dairy, I would just back it up, go to goat, which is what Dr. Natasha says to do because it's so close to human dairy, if you will, human milk. And um, I would start with just a little bit, Dana, just, you know, again, for everyone, start with just a little bit that may be the amount that fits on the head of a pin. Little tiny bit, right? Little tiny bit, once. So really back it up, back it up, back it up. Start with just a little bit and also um, just really suggesting that you move to goat, try goat and try it very, very slowly. That's where I would go. Hello, Cherie Davis. She cannot manage any cow dairy. Okay, we'll try, we'll keep trying with goat raw organic yogurt and still no luck. Yeah, but forget the yogurt for now. Go back, go back and make sure she's getting ghee and butter and hang out there for another month or two and then start with a very, 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 very little bit of organic goat yogurt. Little tiny bit. Hello, Elizabeth. All right. Let's see what else I have up here, I hear, I hear. All right, Christina's got, hello, Christina. Are you familiar with a specific yogurt strain, Lactobacillus retiri, that has lost lots of claimed benefits? No, I mean, yes and no. Remembering that what we're trying to do in, yes, I am familiar with it, I've heard of it. Um, I really suggest that you do what Dr. Natasha suggests which is to make sure that you are using multiple strains when you make yogurt. Multiple strains, not a single strain, multiple strains. The more strains you've got, the more balance your gut will come to. If we start really just using one strain, then we're just setting everything back into imbalance again. It says to add potato starch, yep, nope. Yeah, we don't do inulin or potato starch, everyone, on gaps. Those are starches that feed pathogens. Yeah. Is there a way to test how much bacteria do I get without... Nope, I have no idea. Yeah, I really don't know. Christina, we just do the, do the food and we do not do inulin on gaps. We do not do any kind of starch on gaps. So no potato starch, no tapioca starch, no inulin, etc., so I would just be getting a very robust yogurt strain. If you jump on Cultures for Health, everyone, they've got several different types of yogurt strains. Combos, I would start there. Oh, I know. Oh, no organic goat butter or ghee to be had in the UK. Yeah, I bet it's tough to find. So... Maybe take a couple months off, a month or two off. Do not lose heart. Keep working the meat stock. Keep working the ferments. You've come a long way. And then we'll start again. Start again in March, right? No worries. Hello, Deka. All righty. Let's go back here. We have Wanderlust Heart CB. Recommendation for dealing with the flu. I'm doing lots of meat stock, lots of fluids with ghee, ginger, honey, and salt. Garlic, raw garlic, and lots of it. Um, lots of kefir. I don't know if you take kefir or not, but you want to knock out the flu, we're on kefir. If you can't do kefir, do kefir whey. Um, that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, vegetable medley. Vegetable medley fluid. Uh, veg the liquid from vegetable medley. 
Why? Because vegetable medley is made with kefir whey. So that's a great thing for dealing with the flu. Right? Yep. Lots of ginger. Good. Lots of lemon. Lemon, lemon, lemon. Lots of garlic, raw garlic, fermented garlic. Um, I would also be sure you're doing a lot of um, apple cider vinegar and water. You must acidify in order to kill this thing off. Apple cider vinegar and water. Vegetable medley. That's where I would go. And kefir whey if you've got it. Yep. That's, yes, blessings to you dealing with the flu. No worries, you're going to be fine. I know, you don't feel well now, but you're doing great things, really good. I have to say, um, again, one more time with feeling, folks. Um, kefir, or kefir, will knock out any virus that is coming along. So if you can drink some kefir, Go for it. If you can't stomach the kefir because it's too thick, um, make kefir whey and drink that. It's the microbes in the kefir that are so powerful against any of these flus, for sure. All right. Okay, Caroline asks, is it okay to give kids cultured dairy when they have colds? Yes. Or does it increase mucus? Yes, it does increase mucus. In fact, Dr. Natasha in the Blue Book talks about lungs in here. She talks about the mucociliary escalator. Say that at least once. Muco, meaning mucus. Ciliary, meaning there's cilia, right? The mucociliary, there's cilia in the lungs that brings the mucus up and then out. So cultured dairy is a great thing to give anyone believe it or not, when they're ill, because it will help them get the mucus out for sure. And the best one, of course, is kefir. If you've got a virus, it's kefir. Kefir, kefir, kefir. Go there. Way better than yogurt. Yeah. I mean, like exponentially more powerful than yogurt will ever be. So, Christina, I would go and make kefir. Dump the fabulous whatever strain yogurt you're trying to do. Don't even bother. And go jump into kefir. Okay, I think these starches are for bacteria to eat so that nothing should be left with yogurt. Yeah. The specific strain likes lower temperatures and it's very good for SIBO and sleep and lots of other things. Whatever you would love to do, you can do it. Um, I would jump into here. Dr. Natasha goes over very many different strains and what they're beneficial for, and that's awesome. However, if it were me, I wouldn't bother with the yogurt. I would go straight to kefir. That's, that's the word according to Monica. There is so much information now about the benefits of kefir and the fact that it knocks out every virus. And if you have SIBO, you want to go to kefir anyway because... SIBO is small intestine bacterial overgrowth, and kefir has yeasts in it. That's what I would do. That's just what I would do. But you're welcome to do anything that you would love because it's you, you, you. It's your experience, your body, and your healing. Okay. Would I need to heat my raw milk to boiling? Again, if whenever, folks, whenever you're making yogurt, whenever you're making yogurt and you're making it with a starter packet, I highly recommend that you follow the directions on the starter packet. That means if the starter packet says bring it to a boil, bring it to a boil, even if it's raw, because then you'll have a base yogurt, a good, strong base yogurt that then you can use some as the previous batch to start your next batch. Then you won't have to heat your raw milk to boiling the next time. I hope that makes sense to all of you. Okay, let's see. Uma said, five-year-old taking most of fermented vegetables and dairy fermented can take extra pro probiotic like BioCold. Yes. So the question is, can, <clears throat> if a five-year-old is eating a lot of fermented vegetables and dairy, can they take BioCult also? Yes, you can. 
Uh, you shouldn't need to, Uma, because, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, lacto-fermented vegetables and dairy, cultured dairy, will have far more microbes than that little tiny capsule of BioCult will ever have. So um, we practitioners are really, uh, really recommending that you get your good probiotics from food. So just up the amount of fermented dairy. You're welcome to give your five-year-old one of the BioCult capsules. It's fine. No problem. Shouldn't be a problem. But, um, you know, it's exponentially more beneficial to get, uh, to eat the probiotics than to take the pill. All right, let's see. Take a pill of probiotics. Hello, Martin from the Netherlands. Hello, Netherlands. Fabulous. Hello, Na. Yay, great. All right. I will get big amounts of raw cream finally. Yes. Clabber it or make creme fraiche? Creme fraiche, creme fraiche, creme fraiche. Do, I would do maybe some clabber and want some creme fraiche. You're welcome, Uma. Okay, let's get to Alexandra. For a child having diarrhea, eating just meats, vegetables, and fruits, dump the vegetables and fruits, everybody. I'm telling you, I know that we've all been brainwashed. <clears throat> That's strong language from me, but we've all been brainwashed to think that our children are go and we are going to die if we don't eat enough vegetables, and it's just not true. If anyone is having diarrhea, take the plants out. Do it for a week or two, and then see if you can bring them back in. If you can't bring them back in without diarrhea, keep the plants out. I have to say, folks, no plant gaps rocks. <sighs> yeah, I would just take the vegetables and fruits out, please, um, for probably two weeks. Definitely add in a lot of whey. And, uh, and then maybe in two weeks, see if you can introduce vegetables again, not fruits. Keep the fruits out for a while, folks. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Um, I would be really looking at uh, whey because that's high-protein dairy. It will help to firm the stool. I would be looking at uh, kefir, kefir. I would be looking at uh, cultured cream. Maybe not cultured cream and diarrhea. Kefir and yogurt and whey and meat and stock. That's it. Two weeks and, and uh, see what happens for your little person there. All right. You're welcome, Wanderlust Tart CB. Okay, I'm tolerating about three tablespoons of sour cream and a tablespoon of ghee a day. Great! Is it okay to introduce the kefir now while having to deal with the flu and having it as an introduction? Yes, you can start kefir now. Because you know what? If you need it, you're not going to have a massive die-off. Your body's going to be like, perfect! Your body's going to be like, yay, the cavalry has come! So yeah, you're good. That's what I would do. Up to you. Feel it in your body. Does it feel like a good idea to start kefir? If it does, go for it. If it doesn't, wait. But you could make the kefir now and then um, introduce kefir whey if you like. It's another option. Okay, what do I think about a detox gaps sauna? Yes. I love saunas. Uh, meaning uh, steam saunas, heat saunas. How can you get the body to sweat? That's a good thing to do. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Let's see. What else? Did I get everyone? I want to make sure that I got everyone. Going to the top. Scrolling, scrolling. Can I just tell you how much fun I had teaching a meat stock class today over Zoom? Woohoo! Okay. More people loving meat stock. Okay. Got that. Got that. Got that. Got that. Alma, hello. I don't know if I said hello. Hello, Alma. Hello, Kaney. I hope it's Saney, Kaney. I don't know if that's correct. Good, good, good. We did that. We did that. We did that. Aria, we did that. We did that. We did that. Hello, Fritzia. I'm so excited about what you mentioned about kefir. Kefir superpowers against viruses. Yes. Get it. Do it. Drink it. There is an article on our page. Go up to Featured Posts. And I think I said, this is the article I said today about kefir. And it tells you that it goes and knocks out viruses. So 
Start making that fabulous stuff, everybody, and start drinking it to the best of your ability. Slow and steady. Don't go drink a whole cup full. You'll be sick. But start with a tablespoon, teaspoon, tablespoon, slow and steady. Slow and steady, slow and steady, gradually increasing. All right. We're at the end of our time. I hope it was helpful today, folks. I really hope it was helpful learning about casseroles. Thank you for those. I really enjoy being with you every week. Um, thanks for visiting with me. And I wish you a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And um, blessings to all. We'll see you next week. Same Gaps time. Same Gaps channel. See you then. Bye now.